um, we're gonna assess joint play of the ribs and, and then go through our joint mobilizations too. So rib springing would be the joint play assessment and then the mobilization our grades one through four. Um, so let's think about anatomy first. So that's why we kind of have the skeleton out to just appreciate uh, the orientation of everything. So our scapula sit on top of which ribs? Two through seven. Two through seven, you got it. Uh, now in a human, whose scapula are not screwed on to their rib cage. <laughs> when uh, a person lays in prone with their arms down by their side, that uh, a lot of times will adduct the scapula or bring them closer to midline. And if we appreciate here, there isn't a lot of room to palpate the ribs from two to seven because of that. So what you can do in terms of patient positioning in prone is have your partner or your patient um, rest their arms off the side of the table that will naturally abduct the scapula and bring them further from midline so that there's more room to uh, perform the springing technique and, and any joint mobilization technique. Now we already talked about palpation. When it comes to the ribs, the other thing you wanna think about is, is the orientation. So if we're standing uh, to the side of our patient and we're deciding to mobilize, we gotta think about the direction of our force and the orientation of the ribs. So the ribs kind of are oriented where they slope downward uh, and forward. So our hand is gonna wanna be in the same orientation of the rib as we're assessing uh, the, uh, the mobility of the joint. We're gonna stand on the opposite side. What, how, what do you think will be the direction or the line of our force? Like a diagonal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so instead of mobilizing or testing joint play, posterior to anterior, we're gonna need to go more at an oblique angle. So the line of our force will be more anterior and lateral versus strict posterior to anterior. So our hand needs to be along the orientation of the rib and then our line of force is going to be more anterior and lateral as well so that we're actually assessing at the costo-transverse joint, um, true, true joint play. Okay, good. Now, if I push on the rib, what does the rest of the body do? It rotates. So we have to be able to stabilize the contralateral side as well so that we're isolating our assessment to that rib. So you stand on the opposite side. Your mobilizing hand is going to be the hand that can be in the direction of the rib or the orientation of the rib. Your mobilizing point is that hypothenar eminence. You're gonna come off of the costotransverse joint onto that flat posterior surface of the rib uh, to mobilize. So you're gonna hook on to uh, that point with your hypothenar eminence. Your non-mobilizing hand is going to be on the transverse process of the same segment, just on the opposite side. Your hypothenar eminence is gonna hook on to that, and then you're going to apply a strict posterior to anterior sustained force. So you're essentially pinning the transverse process in place as you come onto the rib angle to mobilize anterior lateral. Now we can really isolate that segment without a lot of rotation at the trunk occurring. So you'll, you'll do your rib springing that assesses joint play, and then you're gonna uh, appreciate R1, R2, the end feels, and then walk it back for your grades one, two, three, and four. You wanna to try to keep your hand relaxed. Even though most of your force is through your hypothenar eminence, relax your hand. That's gonna to help to keep your patient relaxed and, and feel a little bit more safe with the technique. Questions on that? Okay, you're gonna to try to work through some adjacent to the scapula all the way down. You wanna be able to identify which specific rib you're on as you're going.